question. I also want to uh, speak to the Tibet Policy and Support Act of 2019. Uh, I am the prime Republican sponsor of that bill, working with my good friend and colleague Jim McGovern. Uh, just last month, 20, a 24-year-old Tibetan former monk named Yon Ten set himself on fire, and he is one of 150 self-immolations which have occurred over Tibet uh, in, since 2009 in protest of China's continuing and worsening occupation uh, of, of, those, of, the, of the people. Uh, what could drive a man to that extreme? Well, under Xi Jinping, uh, there has been a, a, an expansion of the effort to erase Tibetan culture and to bring about what they call the sinitization of Tibetan Buddhism, just as it seeks to bring all religions, religious believers to heal in China, a phenomenon which I discussed in an op-ed article that I wrote for the Washington Post nearly a year, a year ago. Xi Jinping is trying to take every faith, including Tibetan Buddhists, and say they must kowtow to him and to Marxist-Leninist uh, principles, uh, or else they will be jailed, uh, tortured, uh, and even worse, killed. In the past year, according to the China Commission, and I am the former chairman of it, and I'm currently the ranking member, the Chinese government has forced Tibetans to remove photos of the Dalai Lama from their homes. And whose picture goes up instead? Xi Jinping. This Congress this year has a list of important acts of legislation focused on China, Two Hong Kong bills, a bill just the other week on the human rights situation of the Muslim Uyghurs, and now we are addressing the issue of Tibet. Keep in mind that just one year after the communists took control over the Chinese mainland, China began the process of annexing neighboring country of Tibet. Beginning in October of 1950 uh, and continuing into the next year, troops of the People's Liberation Army marched into Tibet, uh, easily overcoming resistance and forcing the government of Tibet to acknowledge uh, the overlordship of China. An uneasy period of semi-autonomy existed until 1959, when Tibet tried to overthrow the yoke of communist occupation. This, too, was crushed and crushed brutally. China completed its incorporation of Tibet, and the Dalai Lama fled 60 years ago. In exile, the Dalai Lama became the personification of Tibetan national and religious aspirations. Thirty years ago, the Nobel Committee recognized the Dalai Lama for his peaceful challenge to Chinese occupation and his defense for the dignity and autonomy of the Tibetan people. This year, incidentally, I plan to nominate the Hong Kong protesters for the Nobel Peace Prize and hope that my colleagues on this committee will sign that letter of nomination. I would point out that Liu Xiaobo, uh, I led the effort in this house, uh, and it was joined by people all across the world when he was named uh, the Nobel Peace Prize winner, and that at least brought a tremendous focus on the ongoing human rights abuses uh, by China. In the 17 years since the original Tibetan Policy Act of 2002, the human rights situation in Tibet, sadly and tragically, has worsened. The Chinese government has refused to enter into dialogue with Tibetan leaders, and Chinese officials have threatened to select future Tibetan Buddhist leaders, including the successor uh, to the 14th Dalai Lama, in clear violation of their international religious freedom obligations and the traditional practices of the Tibetan Buddhist faith community. Furthermore, the policies of the Chinese government have severely degraded Tibetan religion, culture, language, livelihoods, and the natural, uh, natural environment. This bill, along with the Reciprocal Access to Tibet Act, which the Congress passed in 2016, uh, sends the right message to Beijing. The fate of Tibet, its people and resources and religion are a strategic interest to the United States. But above all, they're entitled, they're entitled to freedom and they're entitled to democracy.